Okay, so now for the bonus tip that we get. Um, we've got three different instruments set up here. It looks like this one is some sort of uh, moisture meter and we've got two alarms. Um, so can you explain how these can really be that last stepping point where homeowners can use these things to really protect their homes? Sure, sure. So one of the things we're talking about is um, taking care and doing maintenance. Um, if you can't always be looking and spying on something every single day because maybe you have a life, um, it really helps to have little devices that can tell you audibly that there is a problem before it gets really bad. Um, so the, these, uh, like you were saying, this is a moisture meter or a damp detector. Right. These all work basically the same way. They have these metal um, probes here. And if the two probes um, both touch moisture, it will make an alarm sound. Now, I don't have a lot of moisture on my hand, so it only makes a little bit of, mm -hmm. you know, don't have very sweaty palms. I it's definitely have yours. sweaty palms. Oh, yeah. Go. Very good. Okay, so that means that it's detecting a lot of moisture mm -hmm. um, and it's making a noise. Um, so we had talked before about wipes, the, I'm flushable just, the, wipes, the correct. dreaded wipes. I'm yes. just going to use some of these because they do provide a moist surface as an example. Okay. Woo! There we go. Okay. Okay. So there are two types of alarms. There's this one that sort of looks like a hockey puck. Mm -hmm. um, you can put that under your sink if there's a, a tap leak or um, by your water heater just mm -hmm. on the floor right. if there's a water leak. Those These leaks of, of pipes and appliances are actually more common than your typical um, overland floods right. or sewer backup floods. So these are handy because these are a lot more common type of flood. Um, so it just has a nine volt battery in there. You have to check it every quarter as well right. while you're doing your checkup. Again, perfect with the checklist. Yeah, so if it ends up having water on it, yeah. it's really annoying and it tells you to come and uh, take care of it. Okay. So that's lying in a flat surface. Th something like this would be good if you need um, the sensor to go down a little bit. So say in your uh, sump pit. Right. So you've got essentially the sump bucket, you've got your um, your float, and wherever the maximum level of the float is that's supposed to trigger the water to empty, put it just above there. It's got a little suction cup, mm -hmm. and you want to try to see what happens if it gets wet. Sure. You're afraid, aren't you? I, well, you know. Okay. That's the other side. Oh. Oh, the other side. Yeah, there's the two little pins on that side. Yeah, that's okay, pretty loud. Okay, so there's all kinds of annoying sounds. <laughs> okay. Now, the the very interesting thing here is that if you're home, you can hear these. If you're able, if you have a good sense of hearing, sure. not everyone does, of yeah. course. So you could get, if you have some hearing challenges, you could connect it to maybe a visual system oh, okay. that would let you know that there is a problem. Um, but these are only good if you're at home. Yeah, exactly. Right? Um, something that a lot of people are doing these days are getting alarms that will go to their phone to let them know that there's that there's a, a problem in their home so they can send someone to, to tend to it. Right. Or they get it tr connected directly to an alarm company. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you have, say, an insurance policy, this is something a lot of people don't know about, but if you have an insurance policy and say you're away from your house, typically for four days or more, depends on the insurance policy. Mm -hmm. If you're not tending to your house and keeping an eye on everything and there's a flood during that time, you may not get any coverage because it's the understanding in most policies that you will be monitoring and taking care every day. So unless you're getting someone to come in and they could hear the alarm, mm -hmm. right? And you still qualify. Um, or you can have your alarm sent directly to your alarm company. Right. And then that's considered monitoring oh. because they're set up to have a key, get in. So you don't have to worry about the house sitter yeah. anymore, that yeah. kind of so idea. Yeah, so you have to have either a house sitter mm -hmm. or an alarm company who is monitoring in order to maintain insurance coverage. Now, like I said, every policy is a bit different, right. but these are something that um, could really go a long way to help people um, make sure that they're, they're 
dealing with any challenges before they become significant right. and also so that if there is a problem they'll still get insurance coverage which is so, huge absolutely yeah. so um these little guys are between five and ten dollars the oh. battery's like two bucks yeah um this is more like 37 dollars okay okay um the ones that have monitoring can mm -hmm. be you know get into say a hundred dollars maybe a little bit more and then if you have monitoring from your um your um security company mm -hmm. that's going to be additional money so yeah, it depends on what level you want right um but they're very important and i, and I think we're going to see these more and more as smart homes become the thing yes everybody's going yes. to know what's going on in their home right. and maybe even remotely be able to turn off the water Okay, like okay, yeah. very so interesting. So these are the way of the future. That's why they're a bonus tip because they're up and coming mm -hmm. and you saw it first. Oh, perfect. Well, thank you very much. Okay, and I appreciate these three plus the bonus tip today on how to protect your home from home flood risks. Thank you very yes, much, Cheryl. You're very welcome.